Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Always a bit of a treat for me and I hope by extension for you to look at a German watch on the channel. There don't tend to be too many of them floating around the 500 US dollar price point or less. Mostly it tends to be Swiss made, Japanese or the majority Chinese made watches. So a German watch is always a bit of a treat. And today it's a repeat. This is the second watch by a small Berlin based micro brand Lilienthal Berlin that I've reviewed so far on the channel. I looked at one of their quartz pieces at the beginning of 2018. Very nicely designed, minimalist, but with enough cues from the, the Berlin cityscape to make it quite interesting and a fantastic German leather vegetable tanned strap. It was all going swimmingly until I flipped the watch around to the case back and saw to my horror that they had completely cheesed all three of the retaining screws. Lilienthal Berlin were also horrified when I published the video. They got in touch, apologized profusely and said, look, we've got an auto coming out in a couple of months. We'd love you to review that one as well. And we promise the screws will be assembled correctly this time. So that's what we're doing today. Now this one is called the Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist, a German word meaning to have captured the spirit and mood of the times. Have they? Let's flip the camera and find out. So have Lilienthal Berlin captured the mood of the late Anthropocene? Probably more importantly, have they screwed the case back on properly this time? Let's find out. As with the L1, the quartz piece that I reviewed earlier this year, a lot of attention to detail has gone into the packaging. This is also made in Germany. Now, made in Germany, I believe, has a slightly different set of parameters to Swiss made. Clearly, we have got a Swiss movement in this one today. There's a Salita SW200. So the majority of the money, I would imagine, that's gone into this one has originated in Switzerland, but they still qualify for made in Germany. The assembly is carried out in Germany. Now, clearly, we're a little bit more fashion forward than usual today. There are a selection of photographs for your pleasure. Uh, beautiful people doing beautiful things, wearing beautiful Lilienthal Berlin watches. So perhaps that is capturing the spirit of the day. And there is the watch itself. Lilienthal Berlin's own version of Euro minimalism, but with some nice little touches. There is also a comprehensive instruction manual here, all in German. A couple of stickers, 10 euros off your next strap, and a certificate of authenticity, including a number. These are all numbered editions. It's a first edition, it's their first automatic, this one being 53 out of 500. So we've got a diameter of 42 and a half millimeters, only 10 and a half mil thick though, thanks to the Salita 200. 48, 49, just under 49 mil lug tip to lug tip. 20 mil lug width though, so they haven't gone for 22. I think proportionally, dimensionally, they've got this one just about spot on. And on the supplied German vegetable leather tan strap, I'll talk about the strap on this one a little later on, weighs in at 70 grams. So kind of ideal set of dimensions and specifications then for an all day, everyday piece. We've got a 316L three piece stainless steel case, smooth bezel as you can see there, mid case and a, a screw on case back. I'll show you the back in a little bit. Kind of very fine bead blasted finish throughout this one. Dead flat sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating covering that minimal dial. Zoomed right in on the dial and it's actually a galvanized metal dial, but all matte finish so that it doesn't reflect. Clearly a little bit of Bauhaus in there. They've gone for a, a minute track, if you see what I mean, rather than hour markers around the outside. So prominent Arabics at 60, 15, 30 and 45. Smaller Arabics in the five minute increments and little dots on the minutes all the way around as well. Lilienthal Berlin logo underneath the 12 o'clock. Nicely integrated date frame down there above the six o'clock. Made in Germany, either side of the 30. And just zeitgeist and automatic. Nice and clean dial. A small but nicely proportioned handset that our hand pushing just around to the edge of that inner track. I'll try and get a zoom in on that in a second. And the minute hand pushing all the way out to the, the minute markers around the edges there. And a nice shade of blue on the second hand, just adding a pop of color to it. Otherwise, quite a plain watch. Couple of little color match there as well. The vintage style cross stitching on the strap, picking out that bluey purple of the second hand very nicely. Perhaps you can see just that little bit of texture to the printed dial, that recess, little groove cut out there for the, the inner track where the hour hand rotates. 
Three piece case as noted, all bead blasted, but a very fine bead blast, kind of matte finish again. One of the most interesting features of this watch is the recessed crown. So polygonal crown to ape the, the Berlin world clock, apparently. Now it means that you're not gonna be hand winding this one all that readily. It is a little bit tricky to try and hand wind. One pop though, and you access the, the date function there as seen and a second pop adjust the time but if you're a nail biter you're going to be struggling to operate this one it does however give the watch a really clean look because they've almost made that crown disappear it's a 42 and a half but it wears smaller and visually has the look of a smaller watch i think a really interesting design choice and the strap is just superb handcrafted in germany to the point that they've double stamp this one you can barely read what's being said but genuine leather vegetable tanned smells fantastic again that little pale blue stitching there quick release spring bars Lilienthal Berlin stamp smells fantastic wears very very comfortably indeed definitely one of the highlights of the watch lovely grainy texture to the uppers as well and again it's a little matte bead blasted buckle and tang there no engraving with the brand name, but it doesn't really need it. And flipping the watch over to the case back, and they got the screws right this time, thankfully. Display case back showing off that Salita 200. Dirty big black rotor there, just with the B, the Lilienthal Berlin logo. And it's got the full spec sheet on the back. Where did this craze start, by the way? Why do companies feel that they need to put every little detail about the watch printed on the case back? So Zeitgeist Automatic, first edition, 53 out of 500. What else have we got? Five atmospheres water resistant, which is enough for this type of watch, all stainless steel, designed in Berlin, made in Germany, Swiss Movement SW200, and advertising this Sapphire Crystal. If you were in any doubt as to the specs of the watch, just flip it over, they're all there for you to see. Salita 200, definitely one of my favorite movements at or around this 500 US dollar price. I'd rather have the Salita in the back of my watch than the ETA. I find them to be more consistent and generally more accurate. 26 dual hack hand wind, four hertz, so 28,800 vibrations per hour, leading to a very smooth eight ticks per second of the second hand. You get that lovely sweep. They're accurate, they're reliable. Around a 38 hour power reserve. Good choice at this price. And there it is on top of my seven inch wrist. 42 and a half, but wears, I think, like a smaller watch. Due to that recessed crown, super slim 10 and a half mil, fits dead flat on the wrist there. Slightly small vintage style curved lugs, but you do get a nice, conformity to the wrist beautiful super soft and supple leather strap to boot zoomed higher for perspective and as noted it really does look and wear like a smaller watch than that initial diameter dimension suggests looks good out in bright sunshine as well if you do wear your watch a little looser than i do and a little lower down the wrist the lack of crown digging into you is gonna be a real boon, I think. Not the most legible dial in the world. A little bit of AR coating helps with that, but a rather small handset and rather small indices as well. But I guess that's the Bauhaus style that they were going for. Moans and niggles, well, as noted, it's not the most legible watch in the world. The hour and minute hands really are a little bit slim and there's no color definition as well. There's no color contrast, so they don't exactly pop from the dial, but it's not a dive watch. So I guess you can ask for super legibility from this one. It's not really the style. There is some loom on the hands. I'll pop up a, a brief loom video there, BGW9. Again, rather notional, not a lot of real estate dedicated to it, but better some loom than no loom. Now the price on these ones, around 500 US dollars, I don't think that's too bad. Clearly this one is not going up against Nomos, it's not really going up against Youngins either. I think you need to look at Junkers watches to find this one's direct German competition. Clearly similarities in terms of styling. I believe the Lilienthal Berlin is a little bit cheaper than that particular Junkers. So I don't have a problem with this one being priced around the 500 US dollars. I still think there's plenty of value there, an interesting design, solid movement choice, all the right specs and a fantastic strap. And hallelujah, they screwed it together properly this time as well. 
So there you have it, the Lilienthal Berlin Zeitgeist Automatic. I think at 500 US dollars, this one has a lot of appeal. Perhaps not in the Nomos category, perhaps more in the Junkers category, but there's no shame in that at all. Having those made in Germany words on the bottom of the dial, quality Swiss movement in the back, and one of the best straps that I've encountered, all for 500 US dollars. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.